Welcome to this lecture about the positive and negative predictive values. It is recommended that you first watch the video about sensitivity and specificity to understand this video since the positive and negative predictive values are related to these metrics. We'll continue with the same fictive data set that we used to estimate the sensitivity and specificity. Remember that we had data on this PSA level for 7 patients with prostate cancer and 7 individuals which did not have prostate cancer. These individuals are here defined as being healthy. To see how well the PSA concentration in the blood could discriminate between prostate cancer patients and the healthy controls, we used the cutoff value of 2.3 micrograms per liter. All individuals above this cutoff line are predicted to have prostate cancer. Whereas all individuals below this line are predicted to be healthy. Remember that sensitivity tells how often a test turns positive for people who have the disease. Since we know that these 7 individuals have prostate cancer, and that only 5 of these get a positive test, the sensitivity is 5 over 7, or 71%. The sensitivity is therefore calculated as the number of true positives divided by the total number that actually have the disease. To calculate the sensitivity, we use the numbers in the first row of this contingency table. Also remember that specificity tells how often a test turns negative for people who do not have the disease. Since 6 out of the 7 healthy controls are below the cutoff line, the specificity is 6 over 7, or 86%. The specificity is therefore calculated as the number of true negatives, divided by the total number that actually are healthy. When we calculate the specificity, we use the numbers in the second row of this table. We'll now discuss the meaning of the positive predictive value and the negative predictive value. The positive predictive value is defined as the proportion of individuals with a positive test who actually have the disease. Whereas the negative predictive value is defined as the proportion of individuals with a negative test who actually are healthy. In our example, the positive predictive value is defined as the proportion of individuals with a positive PSA test who actually have prostate cancer. Note that we here use the columns instead of the rows in the table. We see that out of the six individuals who get a positive test, five individuals actually have prostate cancer. The positive predictive value is therefore calculated as the number of true positives divided by the total number of positive cases. Based on our data, the positive predictive value is calculated about 83%, which means that out of those who get a positive PSA test, 83% actually have prostate cancer. This means that 17% of the ones who get a positive PSA test are actually healthy. In contrast, the negative predictive value is defined as the proportion of individuals with a negative test who actually are healthy. This can be calculated as number of true negatives divided by the total number of negatives. We see that the negative predictive value is calculated to 75%, which tells us that out of the ones we get a negative test, 75% are actually healthy. In other words, 25% of those with a negative test actually have prostate cancer. We see that out of the 8 individuals that are below the cutoff line, 25% actually have prostate cancer. All these metrics are very confusing in the beginning, 
However, I usually think of the sensitivity and specificity of how good the test is. And think of the positive and negative predictive values as what the outcome of the test means for the patient. The positive predictive value can be defined as the probability that you have the disease if you get a positive test. Whereas the negative predictive value can be defined as the probability that you are healthy if you get a negative test. However, the positive predictive value and negative predictive value depend on the prevalence, which is how common the disease is in the population that the test is used in. In our previous example, we used the prevalence in our sample, which was 50% because we selected 7 individuals with prostate cancer and 7 healthy controls for our study. Note that the prevalence in the population in which we use the diagnostic test should be included in the calculations of the positive and negative predictive values. If you use the PSA test on older men who seek medical care for prostate problems, maybe only 10% actually have prostate cancer. Let's correct our positive and negative predictive values based on the prevalence of 10% instead of 50%. To calculate the positive predictive value for a given prevalence, we can use one of these two equations. These numbers are previously estimated values for the sensitivity and specificity as well as the assumed prevalence. This notation tells us the probability that a person has prostate cancer given that the PSA test is positive. This is how the positive predictive value is defined. Remember that the positive predictive value tells us the probability that you have the disease if you get a positive test. The probability of getting a positive test, given that the person actually has prostate cancer, is the same as the sensitivity. The probability that a person in our test population actually has prostate cancer is equal to the prevalence. The probability that a person gets a positive test, given that the person actually is healthy, is 1 minus the specificity. And the probability that a person is actually healthy is equal to 1 minus the prevalence. If you plug in a sensitivity of 71% and a specificity of 86% and a prevalence of 10%, we see that the positive predictive value is estimated to about 36%. When the prevalence is 10%, the positive predictive value has now been reduced from 83% to only 36%. This means that if a person gets a positive PSA test, the probability that the person actually has prostate cancer is only 36%. By using the following equation, we can calculate the corresponding negative predictive value. We see that the negative predictive value is estimated to 96%. By using a prevalence of 10%, the negative predictive value has increased from 75% to 96%. This means that if a person gets a negative PSA test, the probability that the person is actually healthy is 96%. So why does the positive predictive value get so low when the prevalence is low? And why does the negative predictive value get so high when the prevalence is low? To understand how the prevalence affects the positive and negative predictive values, Let's consider the following example. Let's say that we have 1000 individuals that do the PCA test, which has a sensitivity of 71% and a specificity of 86%. The prevalence of prostate cancer in this population is 10%. 
This means that 100 individuals will have prostate cancer and that 900 individuals will be healthy. Since the test has a sensitivity of 71%, 71 out of the 100 individuals with prostate cancer will get a positive result. We'll therefore have 71 true positives. This means that the other 29 individuals with prostate cancer will get an incorrect negative result. Thus, we will have 29 false negatives. Out of the 900 healthy individuals, 774 will get a negative result because the specificity of the test is 86%. 0.86 times 900 results in 774 true negatives. The other healthy individuals will get an incorrect positive outcome. 1 minus the specificity times 900 results in 126 false positives. We can now calculate the positive predictive value. We see that the positive predictive value is only 36%. This means that out of the ones we get a positive PSA test, only 36% actually have prostate cancer. The reason for the very low positive predictive value is due to that 90% of the people who take the test are healthy, which results in a relatively high number of false positives. Compared to the number of true positives, since the disease is not that common in the population, there will be more false positives than true positives. In contrast, the negative predictive value is 96%, since there are relatively few people who have prostate cancer that can potentially be false negatives. In summary, if the prevalence is decreased, the positive predictive value will also decrease, whereas the negative predictive value will increase. In contrast, if the prevalence is increased, the positive predictive value will also increase, whereas the negative predictive value will decrease. This was the end of this lecture about different metrics to describe the performance of a test. In the next lecture, we'll have a look at the ROC curve, which can be used to determine an appropriate cutoff value for our test. Thanks for watching.